Let's from Total War here, and today we've got a rating you one man doom stack covering Archeon the Ever Chosen for Warhammer 3. So, uh, we're going up against the Sylvanians, where they're apparently they're the end game crisis, so they're going to have stat boosts. Uh, they've got three full stacks of uh, pretty much everything that's in their roster, um, and we've got just Archeon. So the auto resolve says decisive defeat with uh, casualties medium, so he doesn't get wiped out if we auto resolve it. Let's have a look at his equipment and. Uh, fight the battle. So he's got the Sword of Cain dominating. Uh, I've heard a few people having trouble getting the Sword of Cain in this game. Um, I don't know, I haven't personally tried to get it myself. So the main benefit to the Sword of Cain is the ability Sword of Cain and of course that ward save. And of course that armor piercing weapon strength doesn't hurt either. Um, you've got the armor of Morkar there, 10% ward save. Good. You want to be stacking up as much ward save as possible with one man doom stacks because they need to be able to hold the enemy down for a long time since spell resistance kind of doesn't do anything anymore. Uh, Talisman of Preservation. This is an interesting choice here because you could have had the Eye of Shireen. So the Eye of Shireen reduces the winds of magic cost of all your spells by 10% and also gives you 800 barrier which can be boosted to 1000 using gifts. Um, so I, I personally would really like barrier but I understand why he's gone with a Talisman of Preservation, but let's let's have a look at that stuff. We've got a Rod of Torment here. So that would be an Arcane item. Uh, magic item drop chance, Winds of Magic Power Reserve, plus 5% when increasing. God, that's garbage. And Bound Spells, Rod of Torment, which those are essentially Doom Bolts. Uh, that's okay, I suppose. Um, when it comes to Arcane items, there aren't really a whole lot of good ones in the game at the moment. It's things like maybe the, um, the Forbidden Rod, that one's okay. Obviously, a lot of these arcane items have been severely nerfed since Warhammer 2, and just there aren't really that many good ones. Maybe even the channeling rod, uh, channeling staff, sorry, might have been better, just to, to cast Winds of Magic faster, I don't know. And then you've got um, the Crown of Everlasting Conquest here, which is an enchanted item, which provides a hell of a lot of regeneration. Now, in Warhammer 2, you could have just gotten Isabella's Defeat Trait, but in Warhammer 3, you can't do that, so I understand why you'd need this item. And we've also got the Banner of Rage. Alright, cool. Alright, let's jump in here and see how we go. Now, I kind of feel as though Warhammer 2, Archeon's um, one-man doomstack was actually higher potential than Warhammer 3 because there's a lot of things in Warhammer 2 uh, that actually just doesn't exist in Warhammer 3. So, for example, the Banner of Zinch, um, which I've never seen when playing as the Warriors of Chaos. Uh, it's like they just removed it. Um, that one would, would be a banner that you could put on for like, I don't know, something like 20% ward save. It was ridiculous. Um, you know, you can get the Sword of Cain in Warhammer 2, um, Armor of Morkar. Armor of Morkar is better in Warhammer 3 though, and the Talisman of Preservation was 17% as opposed to, uh, 16%. Um, and then, I don't know, you could have, you could also have essentially unlimited Winds of Magic. Not, not unlimited, but you can have a lot more than 100 reserves in um, Warhammer 2. Now, that being said, in Warhammer 2, I would have to say that the AI is smarter than in Warhammer 3 when dealing with uh, one-man Doomstacks. I'm not walking into this at full strength. Interesting. Um, probably because we're in vampire territory. Um, because in Warhammer 2, I've noticed that the AI doesn't blob up around single entities. They'll send one or two units even three or four maybe, to fight at a time, but then they'll keep just swinging around trying to stay in formation. But in Wormer 3, I've noticed, they will send the entire army to attack a single entity, making spell casting a lot easier. Anyway, we're just going to send them in there and see how he goes. Um, I forgot to have a look at what his ward save was. Ward save 61%, physical resistance 30%, missile resistance 25%. Okay. So he's at his physical resistance cap. Um, I guess this is... This is another thing to consider. In Warhammer 3, you can actually get a lot higher physical resistance through defeat traits because you've got Wurzags, which is available in Warhammer 2, but you've also got Sigvolds now. Well, obviously, Archeon can't get his own defeat trait, but he can get Sigvolds, which provides an extra 10% physical resistance. All right, so what are they doing? Let's take that out. Alright, none of these guys here seem to have magical attack, so we're not going to be taking much damage from them. 
We should probably take out the Mortis Engine first because you can't actually block Mortis Engine damage with um, with Ward Save. I popped this down, but there's not a big enough crowd yet. You can see I'm telling him to attack the Mortis Engine, but he's not doing it. The Mortis Engine. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, he did, he did it then. The Mortis Engine is racking up damage, not much. Alright, let's pop this down now. Okay, I think the blob's gonna get bigger. We need to focus on that mortis engine. Try to get rid of it. Now what I want to be doing is overcasting Searing Doom, but just wait until the big blob forms, because we do have a limited amount of Venture Magic. Alright, that's, that's pretty good. Wait a few more seconds. Yeah, that'll do. Right there. Right, take out the Mortis Engine. There we go, that's gone. Good. Now, the enemy lords here, if they don't have spells like Spirit Leech or anything, I really don't have to worry about them. So that's some pretty hefty melee defense there. So there's also Purple Sun of Zerius. Now, in Wormer 3, his spells have been changed up a bit. Um, he got Purple Sun of Zarius instead of Flamestorm. Now, in my opinion, based on my testing of stuff, I'd still say that Flamestorm is way better than Purple Sun of Zarius. It's cheaper, it lasts longer, and in my opinion, it just overall does more damage. A lot of people do swear by Purple Sun of Zarius, but I'm just, I've never been impressed by it, and I'm not impressed with it in Warhammer 3 either. So I think in that regard, as a downgrade. However, instead of Fireball, he's now got Searing Doom. Which is really good in Warhammer 3. Yeah, really bloody good. So that's the spell we're going to focus on here. Um, quite like Transmutation of Lead. It's a decent debuff spell. Uh, Burning Head is definitely debuffed. In, uh, has been, sorry, been nerfed in Warhammer 3. Flaming Sword of Ruin's okay, but don't need it right now. Spirit Leech has always sucked. And he does get Arcane Conduit now, which he didn't used to get in Warhammer 2. The thing is, we've covered Arcane before in uh, Warhammer 2 as a one-man Doomstack. And he was super strong in, the, in Warhammer 2. And now, I'd say that um, with the loss of magic resistance, it's more difficult to make one-man Doomstacks in Warhammer 3 than it was in 2. Because in Warhammer 2, you didn't really have to worry too much about getting the Sword of Cain in every single scenario. And getting the Sword of Cain, I get it, can be a little bit boring sometimes. Especially when every single fucking one-man Doomstacks got it. Which was really good while we had um, the Bane Spear for um, Valkyr. Um, but yeah, with the loss of magic resistance, you have to get Ward Save to get uh, resistance against magical weapons. Which makes getting the Sword of Cain more necessary now than before. Especially as well with the... Um, um, with the Talisman of Preservation losing a whole 1% resistance. And like I said, there's no Banner of Zinch. I can't remember exactly how much that provided, but I know it was a hefty amount of ward save. Because, yeah, what you do is you just get as much ward save as you could, then get Wurzag's defeat trait, and get Azag's defeat trait. You know, 10% physical and 30% magical resistance. Loads of ward save, essentially. And so you can get Archeon quite easily at 90% physical and magical resistance, which blocks everything. Except for Mortis Engine stuff, where you just, you know, target them quickly. Yeah, I know we got Purple Sun, but I reckon using Searing Doom is just way more effective. So, racking up them kills, and yeah, they're just not able to get through his melee defense. On the other hand as well, I feel like Archeon's like, combat stats have been improved in Warhammer 3. I don't recall them getting that hefty of melee defense in Warhammer 2. Sword 
Pretty nuts. Can't see exactly how much damage he's taken overall. Because we don't have the, um, the, the regen cap outlier. Where there used to just be like a blood icon there. I don't know why they took that out. I mean, that, that icon is there in Wormer 1. I don't know why they took it out. Um, we just can't find out how much regen he's got left until, until it actually shows up with that line. No idea how much damage is actually taken. Yeah, he's racking up loads of damage. So this is where I'm thinking, like, would the Eye of Shireen have been better? Because, you know, we, I think we could cast Overcast and Searing Doom for one or two wins of magic cheaper, which overall will give us more. But we'd also have Barrier, which he's not getting hit very often, so I imagine it would recharge even while in melee. Especially against these low melee attack units like Graveguard. Only the, um, only the Lords and stuff are really doing any serious damage. Still a lot of reinforcements still to come. But yeah, in this situation here, he is practically indestructible. I, I could probably just put it on fast forward and just let let it uh, play out. See, the thing is, what I'm doing here is not not trying to identify whether or not he's a good one-man doomstack. We've already known that from Warhammer 2 that he was a good one-man doomstack. But comparing it to Warhammer 2, and wondering if he's better in Warhammer 2 than he is in 3. So, I know that his equipment is definitely better in Warhammer 3. Like, the Eye of Shireen got a big buff. But he's not, he hasn't got it equipped. He's only got the um, armor of Morkar. You know, I know you can get much easier resistance to magic, magical weapons in Warhammer 2. But you can get much more resistance to physical weapons in Warhammer 3. So the thing is, just about everyone in this army here has physical weapons, with the exception of the Cairn Wraiths and the um, the Hex Wraiths, and they're, they're gone now. Um, so none of these guys here are going to do any damage. But what happens if we went up against an army of, like, Coronate Demons? Um, I imagine Archeon would probably get beat up pretty quick. Can't exactly compare them to Warhammer 2 because, you know, those factions didn't exist. Because, yeah, with 61% ward save, that means you would take 39% damage from magical weapons, which is good. Like, that's a good amount of resistance. But there's a big difference between that and 90% resistance. Take nearly one-fourth the damage on Warhammer 2 from those kind of weapons. You know, what happens if you went up against Wurzag and he's got magical attacks on his entire army? You might not actually uh, get through the entire battle without any damage. But, you know, if you're using a one-man Doomstack in this situation, Probably best to not hunt down demons, but to hunt down the mortals, the, the physical weapon damage. Because, yeah, you can very easily block physical weapons in Warhammer 3. But, yeah, much more difficult to block those magic weapons. Cool, most of the army's dead now. Pretty much just waiting for the army losses. Which isn't going to happen until all their reinforcements come in. And that's another thing in Warhammer 2 as well. The Warriors of Chaos have access to knowledgeable lords. So they can increase their Winds of Magic power reserve essentially infinitely. You know, I would routinely have two, three, four hundred Winds of Magic in a turn 100. No, maybe not 400. Um in a turn 100 Boys of Chaos campaign. But yeah, 
those global bonuses to Winds of Magic, they're all gone. Except for like, Winds of Magic power increase when increasing, which is such trash. Absolute trash. And even the stuff that uh, does provide extra Winds of Magic power reserve, a lot of that stuff is bugged, it doesn't actually work. So, for example, power reserve, and uh, the skill in the, in the spellcaster's skill line, and um, Kairos's defeat trait, and Scrag the Slaughterer's defeat trait, all three of those are bugged, in that you can get the extra Winds of Magic, let's just say your, your cap is 115 because of that, right? You get your Winds of Magic to 115, and then you fight a battle, and then the game forgets that you got that extra 15 wins, and it just resets you back to 100. There are some exceptions to that though. The Tomb Kings have a pretty good exception because they're um, pyramids. They will provide you with three extra wins of magic each. I think you can get nine of them. Six of them. I don't know. You can get a fair few of them. Okay, there's the um, army losses. And the game actually remembers that wins of magic that's stored. Um, and same thing with their uh, bonus for short campaign victory. But yeah, Archeon here absolutely dumpstered this army. It didn't stand a chance. But, is he going to be a one-man doomstack in every situation? You know, he could probably handle one full army, but you'd be have to be a little bit careful about demons. Demon-based armies. Which... shouldn't really be your biggest concern, considering they will probably love you. Unless you're picking a fight with them. Uh, but 3.5 thousand damage. Yeah, another thing to consider is that the AI is definitely worse in Warhammer 3 than it is in 2, because in 2, they wouldn't blob up like that. Made it very easy to just get rid of mass numbers of, of enemies, which wouldn't have made any difference in the long run, but it makes it um, quicker to kill all of them with the Sword of Cain ability and with the Searing Dooms when they're in a nice big thick blob. Whereas in Warhammer 2, they don't quite get... I'm not saying that the AI is great in Warhammer 2, but it's better at dealing with this kind of stuff. Oh, you gotta love how many of them actually got revived. So yeah, definitely super strong. Can't deny that. But we also need to consider he did pick up the Sword of Cain. Now, the thing is about the Sword of Cain is that for one-man Doomstacks, they can oftentimes be quite boring. Especially if we get like 20 of them that all have the Sword of Cain. Because it's an obvious one-man uh, one Doomstack maker. But the problem with this Sword of Cain is all the drawbacks, right? And you've got to take this stuff into consideration, especially when you're playing on Legendary, which, if you have a look here, it is on. Okay? So, yes, it made RK on super strong, but Diplomatic Relations minus 40 with all factions, that actually doesn't matter in this case here, because if you've got four vassals, then all of the de demonic and uh, like chaos factions would be compensated by, by that. That shouldn't be a problem. And all of the other factions hate you by default anyway, so hating them even more doesn't matter. Uh, Upkeep cost plus 10% all armies. Now, Warriors of Chaos don't suffer from supply lines, so that is something that hurts all of our armies, but the Warriors of Chaos are actually quite rich, so it doesn't hurt that much. They can definitely tolerate it, but still, how many armies do you have? You know, quite a few armies here, and all of them have had their upkeep costs increased by 10%. So, you know, knocking that off would bring you down to 72,000, roughly, 72, 73,000 army upkeep. Um, which would have saved you a lot of money. Not Again, not an issue at this point in the campaign, um, so I'm not going to deduct a lot off that. But I think the main one here is control minus eight all provinces because since you're now a settled faction that does have public order, let's have a look at what the impact of that actually is. So pretty close that might revolt. No, uh will it? No, you might just be able to hang on there. But yeah, you're absolutely required to build the public order buildings everywhere. But yeah, you're, you're holding on. Okay, I guess the minus 8 public order. Because you got the difficulty penalty one there as well. But you're holding on. Okay, that's that's good at least. Alright, so maybe the public order one isn't so bad. What about... Okay, it's pretty bad for areas that are um, chaos altars. Which, again, you, you probably could give them over to your vassals. They don't provide any economic benefit at all. Unless they've got an actual tradable resource. 
which a lot of these don't seem there there's one there oh look favor from all buildings plus five percent faction wide that's actually pretty damn good um that's really good but yeah you've had to turn off the taxes there wouldn't be any taxes there. I, I guess i guess the public order isn't that big of a deal for the royals of chaos it really comes down to the uh, 10 percent upkeep cost i don't know i've just got a bigger version to the the sword of cane you've got to take those things into consideration so what would i rate it in terms of like RK, obviously that's a one, uh, like a 10 out of 10 one man doom stack. There's very few armies in the game that are going to be able to handle that. Um, but the Sword of Cain, I don't know. I feel like I need to deduct some points out of it. O honestly, I'll let you guys decide what number you think this one man doom stack is. But one thing that I will point out is that what we just saw there was definitely possible in Warhammer 2. Definitely. Um,. So, the Eye of Sharian over here. Let's have a look at some of these. Yeah, we don't need the Crown of Domination. That's kind of crap him. Yeah, you're much much better off with the regen. Which, in Warhammer 2, by the way, uh, you could just go beat Isabella, which you can't do in Warhammer 3. Unless, actually, you can do it if the Vampire Count um, Endgame Crisis happens. Um, I believe Isabella can uh, does come back as a lord, and since it is the end game crisis here, um, he said it was the end game one. Mm, I don't see Isabella anywhere as a lord. I don't know, but I've heard some people say that they've seen Isabella command uh, armies if if they are the end game crisis. But I think you might have to set it to two hundred, which I don't know what this is set up. Uh, but then you've got the Eye of Shireen here, which wins of magic cost minus 10% for all spells. That is a really good item, but it's a talisman, which means you don't have the uh, the extra 16% ward save. So, I guess it comes down to this. If you're going up against armies with magical weapons, you've really got to make sure you've, you're wearing the Talisman of Preservation. But if you're going up against physical weapons, which is what we were going up against, I think we could have justified getting that extra barrier. Now, let's have a look at his defeat traits here. Because this is important, because this is where you get a lot of your physical resistance. Okay, he's got Durthu's defeat trait here. He's got um, Orion's defeat trait. That's not a defeat trait. That's not a defeat trait. There's the Fey Enchantress. There's Tyrion. It doesn't actually tell you um, who you defeated, but I just know who these are. So that's Tyrion. That's a good one. Extra melee attack. Um, that's not a defeat trait. Neither is that. That is uh, Luan Leonkos. No. Bellacor's defeat trait is good. Okay, the winds right. The winds of magic power reserve capacity. I forgot about that. That Bellacor has. That's bugged. The game always forgets about it. That's why he's only got a hundred winds of magic here. Right? Always forgets about it. You lose it after every battle. Or every time you save the game. That's not save the game, load the game. Um So where were we? Bell of the Ball. Uh, that one there, villagers. That's pretty good for the melee defense. Winds of magic power reserve when changing is, is trash, whatever. Um, that's a good one. That's not a defeat trait. Um, you defeated the demon prince. Tr trash trait. Uh, doesn't look like you took out, uh, Sigvold. Wades through gore. That's obviously very important. Hmm. You didn't. Okay. So, if we have a look at him, he's actually missing out on Wurzeg's defeat trait and and um, Sigvold's defeat trait, meaning he could have gotten to 50% physical resistance. Which means you don't need the Talisman of Preservation when going up against uh, physical attack enemies. You'd only need it for if you're going up against demons. Right. So, yeah, it's not perfected. It's definitely not perfected. You can make this better. Like... It's really good, but you can make it better. Um, hard to give something 10 out of 10 if it's not perfect, especially considering none of those defeat traits are actually really that useful, apart from Tyrion's. Um, but yeah, it, it is it is strong. So, I don't know, I'll let you guys do the number rating, because I feel like no matter what I rate it as, if I rate it at 10 out of 10, people are like, but it's not perfected. And if I, and also sort of Kane, if I give it an 8 out of 10, let you put it wiped out three armies, you know? Um, so how about you guys rate it, and I'll just agree with whatever the consensus is. It's very very powerful. I don't agree with some of the choices here, but that's entirely up to you guys what, what you think. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think of this one-man doom stack. Personally, I don't really like picking up the Sword of Cain with this particular character. Um, but it's I think he's a strong enough one-man doom stack even without it. But I'll let you guys decide. That's the end of this one. Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.